Okay, I'm going to play Neil Gow's Lament for James Morey of Abercarney. Um, this is a tune that was written about three years after this violin was made. It's a Baroque violin with um, uh, gut strings and I have a Baroque bow. And um, I played it um, many times, this tune. And I had the honor of playing it on Neil Gow's own violin last fall when I was leading a trip of hiking and music in Scotland. And that was the tune that I played because it means a lot um, on that violin and to Neil Gow as well. This one is called Hector the Hero. It's a classic air from about a hundred years ago. This tune is one that I discovered in a book from myself. It's pretty popular now, but back in the 80s I discovered it in a book and I didn't think much of it because it didn't look like anything. But then when I had Buddy McMaster come in to the fiddle rally in, Scott, in, in Boston, I used to run a concert series and we'd have a fiddle, I've had a fiddler from Scotland and a fiddler from Cape Breton join us and so we could really experience the, so, so to speak, native speakers of the instrument and their styles. Buddy from Cape Breton played that tune and I was surprised and I heard him play it and it was beautiful. And um, I really like the tune from that. And so kind of the way I play it is inspired by his playing. I can't say I copied his way, but I definitely learned from hearing him. And then when I learned later that he played it for his own mother's funeral, it took on an added significance. That tune really means a lot. This one is uh, called Lady Dune, and it's um, it's just by Nathaniel Gow, who is Neil Gow's son. This is a tune that I, I learned and I played because of my wife, Laura Scott, who's a Highland dancer, and she was making a, a dance for it. Um, she learned a lot from her teacher, who was uh, from a piping family from Barra in Scotland and taught Highland dance knowing a tremendous amount about the music. So I learned a lot about playing from Laura, and she made a dance to this tune. So it was being it was played by Howie McDonald, the Cape Breton fiddler. That was the version she liked. And I really liked that too, but I added, I kind of mixed that with a version that I found in the old Gow collection, because it was written by Nathaniel Gow, and he was the one that published it. So I kind of mixed Howie's and Nathaniel's version uh, for this um, dance that she did. Okay, I'm going to play a tune by John Morris Rankin called uh, Jack Daniels Reel. This tune is written by John Morris Rankin, who was a key member of the Rankin family band, and he passed away tragically. But um, I um, needed to play this tune again. Laura, my wife, uh, was using it for that dance, which was displaying the contrast and the similarity between Highland dance and Kip Breton step dance. And she wanted to finish with this tune. It's a great tune, and I wanted to include it in the fiddle club repertoire in Boston Scottish Fiddle Club when I was running that. So I called up John Morris to ask him if it was okay, and he faxed me a copy of his handwritten version of this tune. And, uh, you know, I talked to him about it, and I said, well, how come you have all these measures all written out all the way through and you don't have any repeats? And he said, well... There's a few places where I like to vary it and have you play a B here and an A here and 
the same spot and play a little differently. So that's the way I like to play it. I, honoring his way of writing it, I play it differently each time. This is uh, Stris Bay by Peter and Milne called uh, the Muir Gallon. <laughs> This uh, tune I was captivated by from a very old LP, the only recording made by Hector McAndrew, who is uh, an old fiddler from the central, east, northeast part of Scotland. It's a certain style they play there, and he is in a long line of uh, that style, uh, uh, one of the great exponents. And I was inspired by his quirky way of playing it, and I, I think I, was, I play it in that style. Um, it's not a dance style, it's a really listening thing. and it's. It's a version. It's a kind of style that some players who think of fiddling as uh, old-timey or, or bluegrass will look at it and say, "Well, that's kind of classical," but it's definitely not. It's a particular style in northeast of Scotland. This is a pipe tune that I wrote, and it's called Kataihke. This tune was the one that I wrote. It's really written in the pipe scale and four pipes because in the early 80s I had a band that had a, a it was an unusual band. It had a piper from Scotland who did small pipes, so we could, it was quiet enough to play and in the key of the fiddle. Plus a Gaelic singer and uh, uh, fiddles and piano and bass and harp. And uh, when the piper went back to Scotland, I wrote this tune for him. It was it's called Kataihkin, which is part of a Gaelic phrase meaning "see you later." And um, so I enjoyed writing that, and I wrote two parts, and then my brother-in-law who's a great piper in Virginia, he kept insisting I write a couple more parts because he enjoyed playing it. And pipers love to have multi-part tunes. So uh, only a few years ago, uh, probably 20 years after the first two parts were written, I wrote two more parts to it. That's it.